All right, we use a 55 gallon food grade barrel. We cut the barrels in half. We drill inch holes. We choose inch. You can do whatever size hole you like. Um, we do drill it up two to three inches to create a basin in the bottom that will collect water. Um, if you get your watering schedule right, you don't have to worry about your plants sitting in water all the time. The dirt will wick it up. It gets really hot here in Texas, so uh, that's for summertime, basically. Uh, we, re we leave a basin because with drip irrigation, anybody that's ran drip irrigation knows over time in pots, uh, the water wears a path through the pot and it basically it'll run right through onto the ground. So we create a basin so that doesn't happen. The water can collect in the bottom and be wicked up by the soil. So we have uh, eight yards of soil here. We are mixing in a little bit of perlite. The soil has uh, compost mixed in. I believe it's cow manure and chicken manure, uh, sand. You can tell it's got sand. It's got some wood bark, some old pine bark. With the blueberries, we do have bags of called better bark. It's an aged pine bark. Uh, we'll be mixing in a bag of each of that for the blueberries to make it a little more acidic. We do use acidifier. But the, the mix should be pretty acidic even without it. So that's the plan today. My beautiful wife Verona is behind the camera. She's going to be playing Spielberg. Okay, so we put just some cheap weed barrier on the inside to keep the holes from clogging up. So they do drain as the water gets built up. You'll never have more than an, an inch or two uh, of water in the basin of these these barrels um, you know we keep an eye on the trees if the basin seems like it's counterproductive and it's causing root rot uh, I don't anticipate it will just because I know our climate here then uh, then we'll have to just drill straight up holes in the bottom of these barrels so they drain but we've always had pots uh, saucers under our trees uh, we use grow bags originally but, uh, I'm super excited this is our very first uh, nut tree that we've had we've got every kind of berry fruit tree that you can think of uh, but i was very adamant this year we wanted to start a, a nut tree and since it's two days after my birthday uh, my husband got me two almond trees and this is my first opening of the box uh, we got them from willis orchard online or sorry he got them from willis orchard online and uh, I get to see what they look like. Thanks, babe. I can edit that out. So here we've got our trees. Woo! We have a total of, let's see, six, eight, eight trees to pot up today. So um, we're going to have to get down a little system here of making it a little bit faster, but we wanted to make sure that uh, these two got potted up first. You can see it says Hall's Hardy Almond and a Texas Mission Almond. Looks like they shipped well. Go ahead and cut off. I'm just filling the barrel with dirt, making sure that we get our, you can see where it was planted in the fields. You see a very distinct coloration, even dirt, but I'm looking for the graft union, which is here. So you don't want to plant it really any deeper than the graft. Um, so I'm just kind of making sure that that graft is going to be above ground. It looks like we're good. I get a little, a little particular about this part. So, and you want to make sure you get her straight and centered. No, nobody wants to try to re-straighten out a tree once it's been uh, in a pot for a while. Put it underneath the roots. I set the roots. I don't go crazy with it. It's got that beneficial fungi, so it helps the roots 
established, reacts to water. Water activates it. Supposedly. I just sprinkle it all around the roots, basically. I've done it to all my trees. I've started using this stuff, and it's, it's great. Uh, it's just got so much good stuff in it. And we do all of our trees in barrels, containers, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the reason is because we have heavy clay soil. So I'm just backing up again, making sure before I really kind of tamp it down a little bit. Make it straight, a few angles. Pretty good, what do you think, Ben? Um, so anyways, back to the soil. We've tried trees in the ground here, tilled it, made wide, deep holes. Uh, watched every YouTube video you could find on clay soil pottings. It just never works. We've had trees in the ground for three years. Uh, they grow weird. They look weird. We dig them up and they never left the hole we put them in. We're talking about making indentions in the hole, making holes wide. And no matter what we do, it just never seems to work. So we started using barrels and it's, well, just containers, period, for our fruit trees. You know, we keep them, we're going to keep them short. We have several trees we started last year that we'll show you later on in the video. And trees can get a decent size. The barrels, containers will restrict their size. But overall, the, uh, the trees will be fine, you know. So time will tell. We'll prune these. Uh, You right now, oh, Dad, this is for you and mom cookies. Okay, thanks. Cookies. This tree, this little stuff here, it's dead, it's going. Um, these are my wife's trees, so I'm gonna leave these up to her. I personally would do this and cut it right there. Um, the research I've done on almonds says open center, pretty much like basically a peach, you know, it's in the same family, I guess. Um, I'll let my wife decide how to prune it. So we'll get to the pruning after everything's potted up. All right, here are our potted up trees. Two almonds, candy heart, plueri. You got a dapple dandy pluot, royal mini, or royal lee, sorry. Dapple dandy pluot. Royal Lee, Mini Royal, Flavor Grenade Pluot, and we got a Pink Lady Apple, Blueberries, there's 22 we potted up in the last two days, Blue Barrel Haven here. So these are our trees, as you see, you can prune them down knee height and then about five or six inches above that because your top branches want to go very vertical but your lower branches have a much wider crotch angle <coughs> so almonds I basically read they they get pruned very much like a uh, peach basically so these are our older trees we planted. We have a Flavor King Pluot. I just pruned these up. This is a Cock Candy Aprium. Burgundy Plum. This is a spicy nectoplum. It's my red barren peach, and it kind of came in with a wonky shape. I'm trying to get this 
and this to be a scaffold branch going the other directions as you can see it uh i did not prune it this way it came in like well it's hard to explain but anyways i'm trying to correct it so these guys this is a saturn donut peach and then what is this one i can't remember oh arctic star nectarine they all got pretty good shapes they've all been pruned up this year uh the best i can do so these last year were sticks these are from last season this is going to be their second season in the in the barrels but they were sticks like that and now you can see the growth on these things are, are crazy now i pushed the nitrogen to these the first year second year i will not i will go to a 21010 fertilizer which i've already got purchased my figs they're all doing really well there's some die back a little bit stuff that didn't get lignified before the freezes came but you know we've been dealing with 20 degree nights and i gotta say i don't see any real damage on these guys well some of them still got some green growth on them my march nanka ramada i will say this this fig is the most sensitive fig to cold it does not do well you can see all this dieback. now this tree is alive so i know it's gonna be all right raspberry latte here's another martin anchor ramada so that's it